It's one of the greatest mysteries in the history of civil aviation. Since Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared from radar on March 8, 2014, the whereabouts of the aircraft and the 239 people on board have remained unclear. Since then, we have only been able to speculate about what really happened to MH370 at the time. However, the findings obtained with the help of radar and satellite data strongly suggest that the aircraft did not disappear in a tragic accident. Was the plane possibly brought down intentionally by the pilot? Did MH370 fall into the sights of terrorists? Or were there even higher powers at work in this tragic incident? Let's put the pieces of this mystery together, piece by piece, and search for answers. The Final Moments When MH370 took to the skies at Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 042 hours on March 8, 2014, there was nothing to indicate that this flight would be drastically different from all the previous ones. Thus, it was a purely routine flight, and if everything had gone according to plan, the plane would have landed safely in Beijing at 6.20. But as we know today, everything was to turn out quite differently. At 1.07, the ground station received the latest flight data, which showed nothing unusual. Half an hour later, the next report should have been received, but it was not. Even more, the aircraft suddenly disappeared from the radar. It seemed as if the transponder indicating the aircraft's position had been deliberately switched off. The last sign of life that the plane sent was registered at 1.19. Before the pilot, Zari Ahmed Shah transferred to the Vietnamese control center areas of responsibility. He bid farewell to Malaysian air traffic control with the words, Good night, Malaysian 370. Less than two minutes later, the aircraft disappeared from the face of the earth. After contact could not be re-established in the hours that followed, authorities initially assumed that the plane had crashed into the Gulf of Thailand. However, over the course of the next few days, an absolute about-face ensued. From the signals that the plane had still automatically sent to a satellite, it appeared that it had, to all appearances, turned around. Against this background, the theory arose that the communication systems at the border with Vietnamese airspace were deliberately shut off whereupon a person turned the aircraft around and set course for the Strait of Malacca. Subsequently, MH370 is believed to have flown further and further south over the Indian Ocean before running out of fuel and crashing west of Australia. What followed was the most expensive search operation in aviation history and a wrecked plane and flight recorder that would never be found. This was despite the fact that several countries took part in the recovery operation covering a huge area. The last search operation to date was suspended on May 29, 2018, also without results. All that has been found of MH370 since then has been a few pieces of debris, which, moreover, could not always be identified beyond doubt. By the time the first piece of washed-up debris was accidentally discovered on Reunion Island, MH370 had been missing for more than 18 months. The Search for Answers 227 passengers and 12 crew members, the 239 people who were on board the plane at the time, were officially declared dead in the aftermath. We can only imagine the pain that the relatives still feel in view of an unknown fate of their loved ones. But for the rest of the public too, the search for answers was anything but satisfactory. Thus, we can still only speculate about the true background and course of events of the incident, which now occurred more than nine years ago. One theory that was initially massively propagated was that of the suicidal pilot. Since the shutdown of the communication systems required a high level of expertise, it was considered most likely that parts of the crew were directly involved in the disappearance of the aircraft. Accordingly, the 52-year-old flight captain would have seized sole control of the aircraft to purposely bring it down in the Indian Ocean. However, subsequent investigations could find no evidence to suggest that the pilot actually had suicidal thoughts and the long duration of the flight also seems to speak against this assumption. If he was planning to end his life and take the other people on board with him to their deaths, why did he continue flying for hours? Furthermore, a voice analysis showed that Cha was neither agitated nor under stress during his last radio call. Despite this, everything indicates that the disconnection of the transponder signal and the subsequent change of course were deliberate and methodical. Among other things, the aircraft had a cockpit door that could be locked electronically, 
so that it was basically possible for the pilots to keep it locked even if someone entered the emergency code from the outside. In addition, it initially appeared that the aircraft had been deliberately maneuvered beyond the official maximum limit. This may have been done to incapacitate the rest of the crew and passengers as a result of the depressurization, because it was actually possible to manually adjust the pressure compensation in the cockpit by a special valves. Unlike the oxygen masks in the passenger area, which could provide a person with breathing air for 22 minutes, the masks in the cockpit provided oxygen for 27 hours. However, the collected evidence of deliberate altitude ascent is massively questioned, which is why a few experts believe that such a maneuver never actually took place. Hijacking or Accident Many people believe that MH370 was the victim of a hijacking or sabotage. According to this, two conspicuous Handshakes could be registered before the suspected course change of the aircraft. This is a special procedure used in network and signaling technology. It ensures the confirmation of received data and enables a mutually confirmed connection setup. It is more than unusual for such a handshake to be performed during a flight, and if one follows the investigator's theories, this process is likely to have been connected with the interruption to the satellite data unit. According to this theory, the power supply was deliberately cut in order to paralyze the communication systems. But, conspicuously, no terrorist organization was to claim responsibility for the attack in the aftermath. Moreover, subsequent checks of passengers also gave no cause for such suspicions. Those who do not believe that MH370 was hijacked and brought down by terrorists point to the special cargo the plane was carrying. At the time, for example, there was a total of 2.5 tons of walkie-talkie parts in the belly of the plane, including more than 220 kilograms of lithium batteries. Initially, it was speculated that the cargo might have caught fire. However, in such a case, the crew would have certainly sent out a distress call. Moreover, it is extremely unlikely that a fire would have led to the failure of all communication systems, and although a technical cause cannot be officially ruled out, the signs point to the fact that the plane was supposed to disappear on purpose. The question of the crash site. Where there is no conclusive set of facts and incontrovertible conclusion, there is still a lot of room for further speculation. Accordingly, the debris that was felt on land months later is said to have been fakes. Those responsible wanted to put the mysterious case on file and offer the world public something tangible. In reality, according to relevant theories, the plane did not fall from the sky in the Indian Ocean at all, but in the middle of the jungle. This was the conclusion reached by a private forensic expert after he studied the case in detail. A New Approach In September 2019, British video producer Ian Wilson attracted attention when he put forward a completely new theory about the missing plane. In this regard, he posed the following question. What if MH370 had crashed not over the sea, but on land, and in an area that is both remote and inaccessible? To pursue this lead, Ian began reconstructing the plane's possible flight paths. In doing so, he focused on a course that would have taken MH370 south from northern Asia. Hoping to locate a lone plane wreck in the middle of nowhere, he scoured satellite imagery. Lo and behold, in the middle of the jungle of Cambodia, lay dormant an object whose shape was undoubtedly reminiscent of an airplane. However, the time came when Ian was no longer satisfied with evaluating images. Together with his brother Jackie, he scraped together his savings to go personally into the Cambodian jungle. It was clear from the start that this would not be a relaxing walk in the forest, however. The terrain became so rough over time that even the guides refused to go any further. So it happened that the pair of brothers had to turn back empty-handed. But what did the Briton really discover back then? Was his private research enough to crack the greatest mystery in aviation? Well, the fact that the plane looks largely intact in the photograph argues against this. It doesn't look as if it crashed to the ground, but rather as if it landed safely, a maneuver that a large Boeing 777 could probably never have accomplished in the jungle. Furthermore, the experts came to the conclusion that the aircraft in the photograph must most likely be a different, significantly smaller model type. What's more, it is very likely that the aircraft in the picture is not even a wreck, but an aircraft that was flying over the jungle at the same time the picture was taken. So, in conclusion, 
the disappearance of MH370 still remains unsolved. The fact is that the truth must be out there somewhere, but whether we will uncover it one day, only the future will tell. And now we're curious about your opinion. What do you think about the mysterious case of MH370? Which theories seem most likely to you? Get busy and write us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback to today's video in the comments below. Don't forget to leave us a like and a subscription to stay up to date from now on. And with that, thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.